Hi folks, thanks for tuning into this episode of Addict to Fishing. You know, I always love doing appearances and events all around the country, and I happened to be down in southern Georgia at a Skeeter dealership and met this guy that he had some stories from Afghanistan that you would not believe. And he would tell me he'd have to watch a couple episodes of Addict to Fishing before he went out in the field just to get pumped up so he could go do his job. Well, he's now a full-time guide out of Tybee Island. I'll tell you what, he's got the fishing dialed in out of that area right there. Y'all, meet Captain Jimmy Armel. Heck of a guy and a uh, fellow vet. Kind of chilly this morning. Hey, Captain Blair Wiggins here with Addicted Fishing. We are in Tybee Island. We're fixing to go offshore and catch us some convict fish. If you don't know what that is, y'all stay tuned. We're gonna show you. It's my second favorite fish to catch of all time. Where is Jimmy? We got Captain Jimmy Armel, Army Ranger. He's a one tough cookie out here today. It is chilly, but we are gonna catch some fish. Y'all stay tuned to this episode. We're gonna do it. You're not from around here, are you? No, you're not, player. <laughs> this looks so much like Jacksonville and St. Augustine and Louisiana. Very similar down there to Jacksonville. I haven't been to Louisiana all the way up to Charleston, basically. You know, down here in the low country, everything pretty much looks like this. Got our big tide swings. It's real pretty. When it gets real low, see the oyster banks and the mud banks, all the little sloughs where the shrimp get when they get back up here when it gets warmer. Couliers. That's what they call them in Kunas country is couliers. Couliers? Couliers. I like it. I don't know why we haven't done a sheephead show before. I, I, it's a fish I've always loved to catch. My mom and I used to go out and catch sheephead a lot. They pull hard and they're one of the best eaten fish, I think, that swims in the ocean. I tell you, one thing I've been wanting to do for years is show somebody how to clean a sheep head. Because most people just complain, oh, I can't clean those are tough, man. Or you uh, need an electric knife. No, this, that, yeah, electric knife. Yeah, no, you no. don't need that. Oh, you got to fin them first. No, you don't. You got to know how to handle your knife, how to handle the fish. Stay away from that dorsal. It's 42 feet of water. The water temp on the surface, 58.4. That's pretty chilly water. Yes, it is. Oh. oh! Oh, you barely had him. Wah, wah, wah. Oh, a sheephead bite is so faint, and I guess it's because they come up and they'll crush the crab and then suck in all the innards that they crush out, but it is such a little faint, tiny little bump on the end of your line. It's really, really hard to feel. Usually, you know, when we got bigger swells, I say in the trough, you should feel it hit the bottom. But the idea of is to dangle that uh, fiddler diddler right in their face. Kind of give them something to look at, come up and munch on. I always say, man, you got to set that hook while they're licking it. Probably the heaviest weight I've ever used a sheephead fish with. I is it really? use a little tiny, tiny split shot or a little tiny egg sinker where you can, you know, you feel if it's, you feel if there's a resistance. Yeah, with these currents we got out here with our bigger tides, sometimes we actually have to go out to a three ounce, Make which, uh, yeah, makes it makes it a little difficult. It really does, especially when you're used to fishing it in shallower water. Yeah. And they're on a, you know, some guys on the inshore, they're using quarter ounce jig heads. You know, it's completely different out here. There he is. There's one. Oh, that's looking like a sheepy too. Yeah, got, got a little bit of a head shake to it. Doesn't have too much size to him, but. Looking like a red Oh fish. my goodness. <laughs> and the biologists tell me they don't live in 50 feet of water. Uh, I guess they're right, we're only in 42. <laughs> <laughs> oh! oh ho, ho, ho. We'll see when we get him up here. Looks like another red fish. Yep, yep, yep. Good. Look at him spitting all your crabs up. Yeah. The thing that was really weird about the area we were fishing that first spot, we started catching redfish in 45 feet of water. It was just really unusual catching redfish that far off the coast. Let go of me. <laughs> 
That's one way to get them out of the bucket. Just stick your hand in there and just let them grab a hold to you. That's him. That's him. Come on. Get up uh -oh. Put there. the boots to him. <laughs> Easy now. Easy. Goodness gracious. Your shoulders don't work like, quite like they used to. I'm jumping out all them planes. <laughs> It'll do it. <laughs> Oh, another, another red fish. Another red fish. <laughs> Goodness gracious almighty. You get them redfish weeded out, I'll catch the sheep's head. <laughs> we know they're down there. Those redfish aren't the ones pecking. No. Little guy. Yeah. Ooh, he's small. Oh! Oh! You know, and another thing to really compound how hard the bite was to feel is how cold it was. You know, you're sitting there shivering and you're trying to feel a bite and you're rocking up and down, you're trying to get a TV show done. You see me miss quite a few times. For this Florida boy up there, it was chilly. Come on, you convict. Get up here. You know, I've been sheephead fishing my whole life, and the trick to sheephead fishing is you're constantly pulling to see if there's any type of resistance on that line whatsoever. And the mistake a lot of people make, as soon as they feel just a little tick on top of that resistance, they want to drop that rod tip and then try to set the hook. And as soon as you drop that rod tip, they can spit that hook and crab out so fast. So when you're bringing it up, you feel any resistance that's you know out of the ordinary, when in doubt, set the hook. You know, come all the way up with your rod tip. Like that. Oh, son of a... Bet you thought I was gonna say something <laughs> bad, didn't you? <laughs> well, he got my bait. And while I got the opportunity, I'm gonna show y'all what we're using here. I, uh, I think that's probably the biggest weight I've ever used. What is it, ounce and a half? Ounce and a half, yes that's sir. An ounce and a half weight that we're using, about a 40 pound swivel. 20 pound test cigar fluorocarbon, and I'm using a number one trocar, and this is an offset live bait hook. And we got the 7.6 out here today. I think I've worn out that eight footer this year, but uh, using the 7.6, great fight for sheep head. Nice sensitive tip. Have it rigged with 15 pound test smack down by cigar, little 3000 size reel. And uh, that's about the rig that I need to use to catch some of these sheep head. And let me show you how we're rigging these things too. What uh, Jimmy likes doing, and I've never rigged them this way, let me get a good one here. Now, I normally go through the bottom and then out through the top, but what Jimmy says, and you know, I've learned something today from him, because my whole life I've always brought back the, the top shell of the crab. What he likes to do is go through the top of the crab and just barely bring the point of that hook out the bottom of the crab. That way, when he comes up and starts chewing on his legs and sucking out the insides, you're gonna catch that fish just like this. Told you earlier, man, sheep said will make a preacher cuss. <laughs> I've seen it happen, brother. I've seen it happen. So what's the structure we're on here, Jimmy? We're on a uh, solid piece of concrete, and uh, around it you have some, some broken up concrete with some sand in between it. Sheep's head like to congregate here, feeding on the barnacles, little crabs, you know, shrimp, any, anything that they can find down there, any kind of crustacean. I'm telling you earlier, I've never caught sheep head this deep before. Yeah, you know, I never use a weight that big either, I think I told you, and it's, it's tough to feel that bite. It's very tough, player. No matter what you're using, it's tough. What, what helps is when you got a nice sensitive tip like this, you got your smack down line. I mean, I've never fished with line this sensitive. I mean, I can feel everything. You've seen me check my crab 20 times just from bumping the bottom. I typically don't do that. Uh, it, this is just perfect setup for sheep's head. It really is. Yeah, these are the seven sixes. These are all, everything we got now is brand new from Lou's. Okay. I don't know if you've been following on Facebook or yeah, not. But... Yeah, yeah. Oh! It you're, did it you're, huh? It did it again, everything. Uh oh, uh oh, there he is. Oh, there he is, there he is. That would be the man, brother. That's what we're here for, brother. That's what we came to do. Hey, this one might feed two people on the crew tonight. That's right. We're hoping anyway. 
Oh, baby! Come on, come on. Get him up, really. Give me a shot. Give me a shot. That's yeah. a sheep head, brother. <laughs> That's a sheepy. Oh, let me get that dude out. He's gonna be a filet sandwich. Yes, sir. That's a good sheepy. Yep. Heading in the right direction, Blair. He's hanging onto that trail car like he don't want to let it go. Don't take my jewelry away. Look at that one's kind of got some buck teeth. <laughs> like an ex-girlfriend of mine. <laughs> but that right there, folks, is what you come to Tybee Island for and fish with Jimmy. He will put you on these guys right here. And if any of you all out there are like crappie fishing, imagine a crappie that big that pulls twice as hard. Look, he's smiling at you. Yeah, that's right. That's a pretty one. Can you see why they call them convict fish now? They are in a black and white striped suit. You know, they do have some unique teeth, brother. Look at that. Yeah, they're amazing. Built for eating those crustaceans. He's got a cavity. <laughs> <laughs> take him to the dentist down the road. I'm sorry, we'll take him to the dentist. <laughs> That's what I've been doing to your crabs all day. Uh, yes, they have. That's why they call them convicts, because they're thieves, and they will steal your bait. But that one right there is going to the dinner table, brother. If y'all ain't never eaten a sheep head before, it's, I think they're better than Red Snapper, because they eat a lot more stuff inshore that's got a lot more flavor, a lot beefier. I just think they taste a lot better. I do. I always describe them. Almost got a sweet taste to them. So where are we doing this oyster roast tonight? It's a place called Wild Dock Bar and Grill. Good food, good oysters, good fish. All right, everybody complains about how tough it is to clean a sheep head because of these little dudes right here. Those there, I mean, I could all, if I touched it that hard, I could draw blood. They are that sharp and they will flat mess you up. So after cleaning a ton of these for my mom, I figured out a nice, easy way to clean them. Most people, they want to start up at the head and try to come down and cut through all those scales. And like I said, those scales are tough to get through. So what you want to do, you see how I'm lifting up on that scale right there? That goes right to his spines right there. That's where all these spines tuck in and kind of like a tuna, where the tuna tucks his uh, peck fin in right there and there's a little line, there's actually a little line right in there that is so hidden most people don't know. And I really don't know if I want to show everybody this because they'll start eating sheephead like crazy. But all right, here you go guys, check this out. You want to start halfway in a sheep head like that and come right through the skin. You see how easy that cuts right there? And then get right under where you started and you can get right next to the spine there. And see, I'm cutting right below where the scales are. And those are the only scales I have to cut through right there. And then you wanna come down and start following the middle of that fish. And you can feel those spines. You can feel the, the backbone on the spine as it goes across it like that. I, no matter what side of the fillet that you start on a fish, if you could do both sides and both sides were there, it'd be a whole lot easier. So instead of taking that whole fillet off right now, I'm gonna flip it over, and now I have a full-sided fish. Everything's flush, and what I mean by that, there's not an indent. The fillet on the other side's not missing, so it's holding the whole fish up. So on this side here, it's a little easier to start just a little bit higher, and you can come right below where those spines tuck in, just like you did down the other side. But see how I'm going right down there, and I'm going right down the spine. Then turn around and come on back up all the way to the head, just like that. Now then, if you know where the rib cage is right here, come up on the head where you started the fillet, and you can literally feel the rib cage right to there. And there is a perfect fillet. Did you see that? And I'm glad we could include it on the show this time just to show you that we do eat a lot of what we catch. As Ryan Lambert from Cajun Fishing Adventures, that one there make a cat cry. But that's how you clean a sheep head. Everybody knows how to skin fish. I ain't gonna waste your time doing that but that's how to clean a sheep head without getting poked. You know, everybody out there knows I love to eat fish, and when you can go out with a fishing guide and bring back a catch and have them cook it fresh like they did at the Wild Forest right there, that was absolutely incredible. 
All right, y'all, we're at the wild right here in Savannah, Georgia. Right on the, what river are we on? The Herb River. We're on the Herb River, gotta love that. <laughs> hey, <laughs> we're with Tony Seacrest, and he owns hey the wild. What's that? I said, hey guys. Oh, there you go. Well, you gotta look at them and oh. say, hey. Hey guys. <laughs> <laughs> we're with Tony Seacrest, he owns the wild right here in Savannah, Georgia. And brother, we are cooking up some sheep head that we caught today with Tony. Did I say Tony? <laughs> Where the hell did that come from? <laughs> Cooking with Tony. We were with Jimmy. <laughs> All right, so we got some sheep's head. These are about perfect for frying whole. They're, I don't know, pound, pound and a quarter. We've gone ahead and cleaned them, scaled them, knocking all the scales off because they are gnarly. We scored them a little bit here so we can get some of the salt inside the fish. Make sure it gets in where it needs to be, a little inside the cavity, just like that. Sometimes you can actually pick them up and turn them, opens it up a little bit. Get a little more penetration there. Is that just sea salt and kosher just salt? Just kosher salt. It's flat, sticks to meat. That's why we use it. Uh, after that, we go right into the dry mix, which is half rice flour and half bread flour. Everybody thinks you need to do cornstarch, which is fine. Um, yeah. It's, I don't, yeah, yeah, I'm kind of with you. Shake off the excess. And she's ready to go. She's ready to rock and roll. And it might be a few scales. You want to get them off. Uh, you can chew them up. My dog used to love right? those. I kind of like them. Give you a little, uh, give you a little fiber. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> So a little shake into a 350 degree fryer. Boom, there you go. And folks, do not, whatever you do, do not overbread a sheep head. It is, it is one of the most delicious fish that you'll ever have in your life. Do not overbread it. You see, you can almost see the stripes and the white and the black still on that, even when it's scaled. Don't overbread it because the taste of a sheep head is so sweet. I mean, look what they eat. They eat little fiddler crabs and little shrimp all day long. Let's see them in the Let's fryer, brother. What temp do you like your oil at? It depends on the size of the fish. The bigger the fish, I tend to drop it down a little bit. So if I got one that's over uh, two pounds, I'll roll at about 340. Uh, if I got one that's under a pound, I'll do 350, 365. And your oil? Oil's peanut oil. That's what I use. <laughs> and you know what? We're going to do one in this one, just so we don't drop the temperature of that single fryer too much. Now we'll let that ride for two, three, four, five minutes, depending. Uh, if we, We'll take it out, if we check it, we still don't like the doneness of it, we'll pop it in the oven for a second, but nine out of 10 times, it's gonna come out of here just right. Cool beans. My favorite inshore fish to eat has to be a sheep's head. Mine too. No doubt. I'm Tony Seacrest, and this is Sheep's Head at the Wild in Savannah, Georgia. You know, folks, this year the weather has just plagued us, and today was no exception out there. The wind kicked up on us, kind of turned the bite off because it was a little bit chilly. And you can bet that I will be back in Tybee Island to go fish with Jimmy again. If not fishing with Jimmy, I'll go there on vacation. Just a cool little island to go hang out at. And for you vets out there that want to just get away and go fish, give Captain Jimmy a call because he is the man to go with. That about wraps up today's show. If y'all get a chance to go to the website addictivefishing.com, sign up for our YouTube page and go to our Facebook page and give us a like. We'd really appreciate that. That wraps it up. We'll see you next week. The other day and all by myself. Check out more footage from this show by logging on to addictivefishing.com for outtakes and bloopers. Oh, baby! Speaking of the devil, is it the right color? No! He's pulling two feet at a time. <laughs> <laughs> oh! oh ho, ho.